Lake District. Um, it's very windy so hopefully you can hear me. <laughs> but yeah we are going up the Old Man of Coniston today from Coniston. We set off in the afternoon so we're doing an afternoon hike. I think it's 10k altogether so six miles so we should be able to get it done before dark and it's actually a really beautiful day. This valley is stunning. I think this is Copper Mines Valley. Um, we're just near the, um, it's called the, the YHA Copper Mine, or maybe it's just called YHA Coniston, I'm not sure. But the Youth Hostel anyway, that's up in the valley. I'm also very excited because this video is in partnership with Fial Raven, who are a brand that I love and have loved for many years. <laughs> so it's really cool to be making a video with them. Um, they very kindly sent Harvey and I, these high coast hydrotic raincoats. We're both wearing them. <laughs> it's not raining white right now, but it is windy. So they are being good wind protectors and hopefully we'll get a bit of rain so we can actually <laughs> show them off a bit. Um, but yeah, we'll tell you a little bit more about them later on. But yeah, I'm just super excited to be back with a hiking vlog. Now we live so close to the lakes, we can just kind of pop over, which is amazing. Yeah, it's just, feels a bit surreal, but it's very exciting. <sighs> so I'll see you en route. So that's the youth hostel over there. And I guess these are just people's houses. Amazing. Crazy. I th Oh, maybe that is also the, I don't know, anyway. And look at this valley. So there's Coniston down there, where we've come from. And we've been walking up through the beautiful valley. Oslo's very happy to be back in his homeland, aren't you, little Oz? And Harvey's also stoked to be back in the mountains, aren't you? Yeah, it's bloody nice. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> we, are, we are in high spirits. <laughs> Thank you. 
So we're just approaching low water, heading up the old man of Coniston, and we just got to all these interesting old um, buildings which are, were part of the copper mine. It's very iconic of this hike to see lots of pieces of kind of old machinery and cables and yeah it's really interesting like as you're walking up that there are remnants of the old mine kind of everywhere. ever so slightly started to snow <laughs> um, it is very cold and we are walking right up into the dark cloud approaching the summit well we're approaching low water and then as far as I remember because I have done this hike before it's not too far to the summit from there but yeah we definitely have some snow <laughs> haven't seen snow in a few weeks I was just telling Harvey a story about when I first came up the old man of Coniston. Um, it was just me and Oslo. And it was when I was first getting into hill walking. So, you know, I wasn't like very experienced. And I remember I, I you know, I had walking boots and everything and I had a backpack. Um, I didn't have a proper map, but I had bought a map and route just for the old man actually really good and um, I got around here approaching low water and the snow was getting really deep really thick and I actually ended up turning back but then I changed my mind and I turned around and decided to go up to the summit and I was like properly having to cut steps um, after low water there's a bit of a steep section I was like cutting steps <laughs> in my like old walking boots <laughs> yeah but i mean i made it to the summit i was definitely not dressed appropriately i wouldn't necessarily recommend that but you learn from every walk you do um, what kind of gear you need what equipment you need i learned <laughs> so much just doing kind of just getting into it doing all those little walks that i did it's nice to be back here now, a few years later, writing a book about <laughs> walking, hopefully with a bit more experience, knowing what I'm doing a bit more, <laughs> with a slightly better gear and a map. <laughs>
We got up to the summit of the old man and it was mega windy up there and pretty cold as well. Um, so we decided to descend pretty quickly, as quickly as we could. And we've now dropped down into the valley where we're back in the sun and it is calm and still again. Yeah, I think we're in uh, spring now. And sometimes when you are packing your rucksack at home, you might think that you don't need certain bits of winter gear but like today for example I am so glad that I put in my winter gloves because it was really cold at the summit and um, yeah I mean even well, we though had snow, didn't we? yeah it snowed a bit and there was a little, a little bit of snow on the ground yep. a little but it was probably a minus wind chill wasn't it oh yeah that was bitter yeah um, yeah you might think when you're in the valley or um, when you're parking your car or wherever at home that you don't need <laughs> um, winter gloves or extra layers or I don't know a, a down well, just, jacket yeah, even. I mean it's good to have extra layers with you isn't it? Yeah Something I mean. Something to keep you warm because yeah. for every 100 meters of elevation gain it will drop a degree celsius. Yeah. So it could be 20 degrees uh, in you know in the car in the valley at the yeah. bottom by the time you get to the top you, think you could have dropped depending on where you go and see yeah uh, you could have dropped 10 degrees so yeah you know, all of a sudden it's 10 degrees and with a wind chill yeah it'll be cold yeah the wind chills get really really cold um but yeah little tip i guess i well i mean i always carry winter gloves buff spare socks spare thermal pretty much all year round but I was very glad <laughs> today that I had my nice warm gloves. Yeah, I just stopped to get uh, some footage and then I just had the, had the camera in the wind just waiting for a feeder to get the shot you would have <laughs> just seen it uh, and oh I got like serious hot aches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you had no gloves on the whole way up and I was like I was just like I, I just have to put my gloves on. Yeah, I was kind of I was fine until until we like got into once we come over the top. Mm. Once we're in the wind, then yeah. it really starts to light. mentioned earlier in this video this video was sponsored by Fjall Rabin who very kindly sent us these high coast hydratic raincoats from their spring summer range to try out and review for you guys it kind of fits somewhere between a lifestyle and a hiking jacket um, but it's still kind of high performance isn't it yeah um, and it's got some nice features Hood locks down really well, hood's quite spacious, mm. uh, the fit's really nice, but it's kind of got space for layers uh, if you're out hiking in the winter. If you're looking for a jacket that can kind of do everything, so you can wear to go to work, cycle to work, walk into town, but you can also wear to go up a hill, then it's a really great jacket. It's a two and a half layer jacket and it is made from recycled materials and is also PFC free. VR Raven have actually been PFC FC free since 2015 and were one of the early outdoor brands to eliminate fluorocarbons from their range so it's actually a really good sustainable option as well if that is what you are looking for. So overall a uh, really nice jacket, really looking forward to getting out and using it a bit more and testing it out uh, over the summer. Yeah. And I'm actually going to do a full review of the jacket over on my blog. So if you are interested in finding out a little bit more, seeing how it performs in the rain as well, because I have used it in the rain and we will be using it a little bit more in the rain, then yeah, do head over there. The link will be in my bio. And thank you so much to Fjall Raven for sponsoring this video. Very cool to say that. <laughs>